Hi, this is Wiz. Welcome to my channel. This is a spontaneous video and uh, this is a reaction to the introduction, finally, of the production version of the Audi e-tron GT. I'm very interested in that car because, as I said on my last video, if you haven't watched yet, please go and watch that one where I was testing a Tesla Model 3 performance and I was explaining what could be my next car. Uh, the e-tron GT is one of the car that I like to have. So I was very interested on the unveiling last Tuesday. We knew already a lot of things about the e-tron because the prototype, uh, the concept version, uh, was introduced around three years ago already. So we already had a glimpse of the overall design and we also saw the cabin, the interior, which we know now that it wasn't really the finished product. And then around the last year, October, November, uh, Audi introduced the almost final version, but was still a prototype, but with the final lines and a camouflage where you could see almost everything, but still not the little details. And we didn't know a lot about the final version of the cabin of the GT. Now the wait is finally over, so we could see all the pictures, we could have a, a, a real view about the car with all the details in its full glory. What can I say about it? I'll start first with the exterior. I love the lines of the Audi e-tron GT. In my opinion, is one of the best cars around. I'm not talking only about Audi, but the, the, the shape, in my opinion, it's even better than the Porsche Taycan. As you may know, they share the same platform, the new electric platform. I'm going to say that the um, the e-tron is the first Audi completely developed out of a new electric platform that has been developed together with Porsche. Porsche used it for the Taycan and Audi used it for the e-tron GT. And that's the reason why those cars are very similar in shape and overall volumes. Audi was forced to design the exterior, taking account the base and taking account the proportions of this wheelbase. And that's the reason why, again, this Audi is a little bit different uh, than the current uh, Audi lineup. Even if it looks a lot like the uh, A7, for example, it is lower and it is wider than the Audi A7. So exterior look, I love it. The, the shoulders are very bold, very I would say even exaggerated a little bit. I like the front, I like the rear. I really like everything about this car. It has a, such a presence. Now, let's talk about the interior. Let's talk about the cabin. Mm. Um, if you are following me, especially on Instagram, if you are not doing it, please do that. Go and follow me on Instagram, Wiz1972, because that is the place where I am the most active, posting every day stories, pictures. If you've been following me, you know that I have mixed feelings about the interior. Um, at first, I was really disappointed. Why? I own a Tesla, a Model S 100D. I like Tesla. I like technology. I'm a geek person. I like screens. I like to be connected. And in my opinion, Tesla is still the best things when we talk about user interface. I enjoyed a lot to be able to use the screen on my car like I'm using the screen of, of my smartphone or the screen of my iPad at home. So I was really happy about being able to configure everything and it was so easy to use. So understandable. Looking at the new dashboard of the Audi e-tron GT, it is beautiful. Don't get me wrong. It smells top class quality. It's very well done, but I don't see any changes. I don't see any evolution. If I compare the dashboard of the Audi e-tron GT with the one of the Audi A8 that was introduced, I think, three years ago, it is almost the same thing. We even lost one screen. So, and this is 
also something's a little bit a mixed feeling because me personally, I like screens. And I am a person that goes form over function. I know that it's more intuitive to use a button, to use a knob. When you are driving, maybe it's easier to, to go and find the button with your hand instead of uh, touching a screen and see where the menu is. It can be even dangerous. I know that and I agree, totally agree with that. But reading at the comments of all the Audi uh, diehard fans, they're all happy about the fact that that screen disappeared and the buttons are back. I'm not. Even if I had some issues with that screen on my Audi e-tron S that I'm sitting in at the moment, I did have some issues like some shortcuts, shortcuts that were not functioning. Um, on the upper screen, I have CarPlay not always working. It freezed already. I had to restart a couple of times, but still, in this particular case for me is form over function. So I don't get why that third screen where you can interfere with the uh, AC, with the uh, shortcuts, uh, it becomes a keyboard or a touchpad when you have to enter destination or find a track on the music interface, for example, that screen has disappeared on the e-tron GT and it has been replaced with conventional buttons. But most of all, if we take a look at the little touchpad where you can select the volume up, down and go next track, previous track, that one comes straight from the Audi A3. And we are talking about a car with the entry price here in Switzerland, 110k. And then we find a little piece of plastic coming directly from the Audi A3. I don't agree with that. Audi pitched this e-tron GT like the beginning of a new era. And I do agree with that. So it's the first 100% electrical car coming from Audi. But then why you go so classic with the interior? Again, talking about some people that uh, we follow each other on Instagram, they say that Audi needs to please the current customers, the customers that are driving uh, um, internal combustion engine cars need to feel at home if they want to buy an e-tron GT. And I kind of agree with that. But again, if you want to innovate, if you are selling this car like the beginning of a new era, then be bold and do the same thing on the interior. I remember I, I've criticized BMW when they introduced their, their new uh, uh, i4. I don't even remember the name or, or, or even Mercedes-Benz with that new uh, screen all around screen. But now I have to admit that they have the merit to be bold and to try something different. Whether you like it or not, People talk about those brands now because they have disrupted their habits and they're going to force their customers to embrace the new technology, to embrace the new era. Audi isn't doing that. You have to embrace the new era when we talk about electrical vehicle with the exterior that is a kind of a, of a departure in terms of styling, but you're going to find the same exact interior that you can find in the 2017 Audi A8, A6, A7 and so on, but with less things than, than you have on those cars. The interior, again, it looks very sporty. Uh, it looks very nice. I kind of like it. And it makes me think more about the interior of a Porsche 992, for example. You got the 10.2 inch screen in the middle. You got the 12.3 virtual cockpit. And this is it. The car is focused to the driver. Everything is goes toward the, the driver. So I do understand that. But again, to me, as I said on Instagram, is a missed opportunity to do something new, something different into the cabin of the GT. 
Also, gone are the virtual mirrors. Virtual mirrors were something big on the e-tron uh, uh, SUV. Uh, I got them <laughs> and actually I'm gonna make a specific video about the uh, virtual mirrors because in that regard, I do understand why Audi is not proposing them anymore. You don't see them on the e-tron GT. They don't talk about it. You don't see them on the Q4 e-tron that is coming uh, in a few months because that technology isn't ready yet. And also, to be completely honest, it doesn't bring anything new. I like technology when technology brings something new, something different, a new user experience. When we talk about the virtual mirrors, instead of a mirror, you get a screen that is not well positioned and you get those cameras that are weirdly positioned and there are some flaws, there are some issues that, again, I'm going to talk specifically in one of my next videos. So gone are the virtual mirrors. You can't find them even as an option on the e-tron GT. So now the question, will I get one? Am I interested in getting one? I will start to answer the second question. Of course, I am interested to get an e-tron GT. Of course, yes. Now, will I get one? That's not sure. Price is a little bit more than what I was expecting. I've been told last month that the entry price for the base model of the GT would have been 104K, which was only 2K more expensive than this e-tron S Sportback I'm sitting in. Now that we know the final price, the e-tron GT entry level is a little bit more expensive. We are talking about 110k, which is 8k more than my e-tron S Sportback. So it becomes a little bit difficult for me. And also considering that I got a very good lease rate in the e-tron S, I got 0.9, which is really, really low. And what they are advertising right now for the GT is 1.9. So all in all, me getting an e-tron GT is going to be more expensive than the e-tron S. So I really don't know. When the configurator will go online, of course, I'll start playing hours with options and start to build the, the, the good uh, configuration. And then I will be able to know if I can afford to have that car or not. So for the time being, I cannot say that I'm going to have that car, obviously. And also, as I said on my last video, I'm interested in Tesla, the new Model S or the Model 3 performance. So let's see what the future brings. Thanks for watching this reaction video. I'm interested to know what do you think about the new e-tron GT and RS e-tron GT. Please go on the comments and also consider subscribing to my channel if you want to know more about my car tribulations. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. Bye bye.